to Awaken with Mark. I'm and, Mark. And I'm Marlene. And we are excited to speak to you. <laughs> yes, it's been a while and we're glad to be back. <laughs> yeah, it has really been a while. Um, I don't think we've recorded since the fall of 2021. Yes, yes. And a whole lot has happened yes, since then. a lot. Then. <laughs> and so we thought we'd catch you up and let you know the exciting news in terms of what has happened in our lives, okay? So in context, on our Instagram account, we did post that we were shifting to discussing the diaspora. We're shifting from just doing general success, how to move people forward, awaken, develop, train, that kind of thing, to specifically those who are uh, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade, the diaspora that spread throughout the UK, Canada, US, Mexico, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, across the, the world. So our message is to the diaspora, okay? And in keeping with that theme, we ourselves have shifted. And so we want to tell you about that shift and tell you how it came to be that we transitioned from the United States to the continent of Africa. <laughs> I guess what we can do is think about what life was like. We were in California, Los Angeles, and I guess the first part could be with regards to the preparation and things that went on what we had to experience and what that was like. So what kind of thoughts came to your yes. mind? Huh? Well, you had to, we had to figure, you know, kind of organize what's the best way to start doing this. And, um, you know, you can't take everything with you when you're leaving from one country to another. So we knew we had to figure out when we were going to do it, um, you know, what, what month, what day it was going to be. And then we knew we had to get preparation and reference to um, having a visa. We all had our passports, thank goodness, but we would still need a visa. Then we'd have to do, of course, the flight. It's like, so things you had to do in particular order in reference to the visa. So you had to have your flight taken care of, where you're going to be when you get to Africa. So that could go in the information for the visa. So we had to make sure we had all that lined up real clear and everything, because there was four of us that were leaving. So we all had to have that all in order. That was pretty exciting yes. because when that process began, you really feel like you're doing something, at least for me. Yes. I'll talk from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I felt like something was definitely starting to happen. Something was going on. And every day it was like a reality kicking in from prepping for the visas and or uh, deciding what things to get rid of because that yes. meant a lot of cutting loose. Now, the good news was <laughs> before we had moved from the East Coast, from the DMV, that's for those who don't know, DC, Maryland, Virginia, mm -hmm. DMV, we had moved from there to Los Angeles. And we had already begun a mental process of beginning to think about, is this really necessary in our life? Whatever it is. Right. So, and in fact, we had looked at a few minimalist videos. That doesn't mean everybody has to do that. We were just beginning to try to be more focused in our life. Right. It just began, and some people we know were doing that also, mm -hmm. uh, like our property manager who took care of our, our house. Uh, and thank you so much, Chris. There in Maryland, she also was on that particular journey. But we had to think about food that, that we were going to get rid of right. as well. And it, what's interesting is in the LA area, that got a little difficult for me because me and the, the guys were driving around in our car trying to find places to give food away. And it actually got challenging. I tried to give some food away at the Women's Infants and Children WIG. Mm -hmm. And um, one lady took some a bag, grocery bag for me, and another did not. Um, I understand. It's, it's 
it's a tough society now. You don't know what someone's up to. Right. And they don't know our intentions. Yeah, so I, I, I get that. Yeah. Um, we did find a, a facility, finally, the last minute, <laughs> that we were able to donate food and things to. And we were so excited. And it turned out to be not that far from our house. Yes, that was we, a blessing. Yeah, it really was. Yes. We stumbled upon them. They were up in the uh, Black Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. uh, not far from where Issa Rae yeah. and the others All live, the as a matter of fact. Right around there, yeah. Yes. And mm -hmm. so that was that was great. It was right in our own yes. neck of the woods. Yes. So there was a lot involved. We made so many trips. We did, and we like you know, the furniture and because um, we did. We had some friends there, but they didn't. We thought maybe they would take some things, but they didn't need anything. But uh, you know, you have your your living room, you got all of your furniture, bedroom, everything, and you had those things had to go because we we were not taking them with us. So a lot thrift store trips, a lot of thrift store. We had a lot of um, household um, uh, cleaning things and things like that that we were able to put in the area that we were living at. Like when you come into, we live in a condo. So when you come in, there's a, a, a common area where you could put stuff there and I would yeah. put stuff down there, you know. But um, yeah, just trying to get things out. And it, it takes time and you're, you know, you're on a schedule of when you're gonna leave and everything. So you gotta get everything, everything out so that you can clean, because we have to clean the place before we leave, so. I found yes. that you had to have <laughs> constant backup plans. Yes. Was one of the places we went to, and I'm not trying to advertise for them, but I guess it was Amdets or something like that, or some place we drove to. Oh, yes, it was some type of a, um, a habitat, habitat. Habitat for humanity. That's what it was. And we yes. were trying to, donate things to them and it was totally different when you spoke to them on the phone yeah. than the reality of when, when we there. went there yeah two totally different things therefore we were reaching a point oh the other thing was <laughs> when we left things out on the curb <laughs> for either and or bulk trash it, people in the area somewhere <laughs> were picking the stuff up which was a good thing we're yes. glad they did as a yeah. matter of fact but they were acquiring or obtaining the items for themselves. Right, right. I really enjoyed that shift though, that mind yes. shift that begins to happen when you are giving away your items mm -hmm. or dropping them off at the thrift store. I remember trying to give away the skateboard and roller oh, skates. Right. We found a young, a young lady, lady down, down at, the beach. Down at yes. Dockweiler, mm -hmm. yeah, right on the water. And she said, what? And I was like, yeah, we're gonna give this to you. And she was like, I remember she said she had um, desired and started taking lessons, lessons. yeah, on skating. skateboard, yes. yeah, skateboard. skating. Mm -hmm. So a, a week or two before, <laughs> that was really exciting. But it it gets you ready for the big event, and I needed those things going on in yeah. me. Yeah, I don't know. That's about the preparation to leave Los Angeles. So next phase is we're traveling from L.A to Doha, Qatar. <laughs> wow. I mean, we're going to be on this plane for a long time. It took us a long time just to get the tickets. I think it took us a third of the time online yes. to get the tickets of the flight to, to get there. <laughs> so yes, I'm talking three to four hours of starting, <laughs> restarting, trying to get those tickets purchased. Yes. The, and thank goodness we, we did. And, and then we got them at a cheaper price once we got them. So Oh, and I remember saying, all right, we're going to trust the most high. <laughs> and I was a friend of ours, uh, shout out to Ernest, had said, if you ever get a chance to go to Africa, go first class because you're, you're yes. traveling so long, so far. More than 12 hours. <laughs> and so <Yeah. laughs> I thought, you know what? I have a tendency to always go for the <laughs> least expensive. It's a habit that goes way back into my childhood and I'm, I'm breaking out of that. And so I said, what if we go for this? Let's yeah. try this. We, the four of us flew first class nice. to Doha, Qatar. I mean, the plane, the wheels were up in LA at LAX and they came down again in Doha, Qatar. Mm -hmm. That, and we were first, let, let me tell you what the first class was. Oh, it's fabulous. They gave us pajamas, socks. Yes, yeah, like a little little case that had like, like you said, the socks, the, the sleep cap, 
And you um, love those, right? Yeah, the I love them. I still thing. use yeah. it. Uh, you know, earbuds, shaving kits. Yeah, so they had a, like all your little things that you might need brush, you know, for brushing your teeth, things like that. So and I know some of yes. you are thinking, oh, they ain't been nowhere. So it's like, <laughs> we haven't but traveled it, to a have, couple but of places. It was nice. But it was very nice. Japan or yeah. even Bermuda. But the deal is to go that far. We've even traveled first class before, yeah. as a matter of fact. And it was like being, it was like being in a luxury hotel on a plane. It was. Fabulous. Yes. You could pull the seats out and sleep because we were going to be on there overnight for hours. And so you could pull the seats out and lay down and sleep. Um, you had a, 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 a screen that showed you that you could push, push and see where you're going. It would show the plane and show where you are over where, where, you know whatever terrain and things like that. That was really nice. Oh, no, you know, that that's for everybody to can yeah. do that, okay, yeah. even on a regular well, we, flight. I, but never, I, will I say, never knew that. Oh, so, okay, okay. I never knew that. So mm -hmm. one thing also was because the, there was the four of us in our family, they separated the divider between us. And you're thinking, well, what is Mark talking about here? What the deal is, two of us, my wife and I are facing forward and our sons are facing us. So we could play cards if we wanted. Mm -hmm. And it was literally, we literally had a quad yeah. little living room area. Very nice. It was, and they could order whatever they wanted. And of course, being young men, they got multiple meals and they got the good stuff, the <laughs> really good stuff. I was shocked when I looked over and saw what they were eating <laughs> on that side over there. <laughs> but uh, that was great. Oh, um, we did miss uh, the Ubers to get to the airport. I think uh, maybe I better mention that. Because yeah, because we, we had like bags. 21 bags and that included carry-on. And so... We had to get a, a a van, two vans, to be able to, to take everything to LAX. So that that was strategic. Yeah, two Uber <laughs> XLs. Yeah, that yeah. was strategic. Yeah, yeah. I will say this though: that is that um, when we arrived in Doha, Qatar, mm -hmm. the airport there is off the chain. It was fabulous. It was really. Fabulous. Here's what we mean by that. <laughs> yes, I've been to airports where they have the uh, tubes. I know in Beijing, they have the, the, the um, internal uh, track. I think they have that in Houston, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. Many airports have that. But this thing, their airport was so large. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. We had ordered a concierge. So we were escorted when we got off the plane. They that met us with really a little nice. sign yeah. and were leading us to the lounge we were going to. Because when you go first class, you get access to the lounge. And so before yes. I get to the lounge, there are high-end shops. Mm -hmm. The airport is clean, brand new. It's very efficient. There was international uh, displays that the concierge took our picture in front mm -hmm. of, like stuffed animals like you might right. see in Japan for the Olympics. <laughs> this huge 14-foot thing, all of that was nice. And, oh, when we got to the lounge, oh, my goodness. They had food laid out, you know, if you want to eat or, or have something to drink. And they had tables set up so you could be in your own little area. And we're in there for like about seven hours, the layover, and, until we, you know, head on to, to Africa and so you could they had areas where you could uh, use computer or areas where um, you could play what was it foosball yes oh the foosball that's important to me because <laughs> I really knew the most high was with us on this trip um, not that I needed to know that but I loved foosball from my college days go Sangamon State University anyway um, your University of Illinois but they had a huge, fabulous foosball mm -hmm. machine in there. And me and my son and I, we got to play yes. foosball and really enjoy it. And I hadn't played in so many years. <laughs> it, it just touched my heart. But the food was fantastic. It was really good. And yes. you got to... I got to take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> they had, you know, area in there if you wanted to do that. I didn't think I was going to, but I was like, you know, we're here. We've been traveling. I said, I'm going to do that. And that was very, very refreshing. So that was, that was good. So that aspect of landing in Doha mm -hmm. was really exciting. We had to go to the map to look to see where that is. That, yeah. That was in the supposed <laughs> Middle East, and I call it the supposed yes. that because I mean, how can I thought continents were surrounded by water, but that's another thing. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the Northeast Africa up, up high. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 
and we didn't get to go outside. We could have, I suppose, but yeah. well, there were the restrictions that were going on. That's and right. So because this was a. Uh, you know, during that, during that time. time. So, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyway, we had those to deal with. But other than that, it was fantastic. It was nice to have lockers to put our things in so mm -hmm. we didn't have to carry certain things roll around. Them around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then when it was time to depart the lounge area, the concierge comes and gets us. Mm -hmm. Well worth the cost. I think it was about $200 yes. or so for the concierge. But when you consider the size of the airport and we didn't know where we were supposed to be going because there are multiple lounges for Qatar Airways. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's their hub, one of their hubs. Right. So mm -hmm. there would have been confusion on our part, and I could have seen we would have spent a lot of our time yeah. just trying to find find, place, find things. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it was well worth it. All right, moving on. So we arrive. <laughs> eventually on Air Ronda yes. and we, we end up in Kigali Ronda. How did mm. you feel when you stepped off the plane? I don't know. I guess relax. Um, it's like it was, a, it was a lot to do ahead to get there. You know, the different stages from LAX to there, there. And in the beginning, it was getting to be a little overwhelming of all the things that you had to do. Mm. But now that we were here, it was like, it was like you could just kind of relax and just kind of be at peace and just, you know, enjoy the next phase of what we're going to be doing and where we're going to be going. And so I, I felt good, happy to be here, very happy to be here. Yeah. I wondered if I would kiss the ground, but it was... Uh, <laughs> I didn't think about it. <laughs> I think it was raining and no, I'm not putting my lips on the ground. And um, the... Coming into the airport, mm -hmm. of course, we have to go through customs right. and work on some things there. We came in on a, a 10 year visa, which is fantastic. Yes, and we had that in advance. Yes, that was very helpful. That's yeah, do that, <laughs> do that definitely. The mm -hmm. uh, going through the customs was smooth and yeah, easier was... than I thought, as a yeah. matter of fact. We went through, you know, you come through one area, then you go through another, and there's the luggage. The luggage was all right there in one area. It's like sometimes, you know, you got to wait, you got to wait, but I was surprised. They were all, I don't think I was waiting for any of them. They were all kind of like sitting out in one area, and we just yeah. got them and started figuring our way out of the airport, you know. So. And the van was there to pick us up. And of course, we needed multiple vans yes. because of the number, yes. the amount of luggage we had. Mm -hmm. It was uh, excellent staying at the Marriott, so we were going to be going there. One unusual thing happened. I needed to go to the restroom, and I remember going back to the, from the van back That's to the right. airport mm -hmm. and asking the guard, who's a soldier, about that. Now, I, I witnessed soldiers in Mexico and other countries mm -hmm. where they're standing there with with guns, but I must say there was nothing like the feeling of looking at someone who looks like you and not feeling intimidated, not feeling that you gotta look over your shoulder, not feeling that this is gonna go awry. And I mentioned that because there yeah. were friends of ours who had not made it out of the, the States because they had different flights to catch That's as they right. were on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I think coming out of Boston, they almost missed the flight right. because of an interrogation by the authorities, air quotes there, they may have uniforms and badges, but whether they're very, anyway, I'll leave that alone. And so uh, one, of the, one of the passengers literally was interrogated about them, about how much money they have, and, and also where you're going, um, literally, it was one of those things where you know something was going on because of race. And they're in Boston, which is not your most southern hospitable town. And I know people would say, well, it's not in the south. I'm talking south of the North Pole. There's nothing hospitable. Right. Anyway, this was incredible to have learned that our friend went through what he had to mm -hmm. go through by the authorities to be stopped. And literally, I think they had to hold the plane while the the authorities supposedly finished interrogating this individual for nothing. So what I'm trying to say then is to draw a comparison mm -hmm. between my experience of just wanting to go to the restaurant, talking to someone, and they treated me 
kindly. They treated me with respect. And so that really felt good. And this was early out of the shoot. I hadn't even sat down in the van yet That's right. to depart. Yeah. I wanted to go to the restroom mm -hmm. before we started heading towards the hotel. It was a nice day at the hotel. Very nice. I think yeah. sometimes we have language challenges. We, <laughs> we didn't learn Kenyawandan. That's uh, one of the key languages right, here. Right. Or French. You're going to have Swahili if you're probably further south. Mm -hmm. But um, here, French, Kenyawandan, I suppose, are the languages to know. And do people do attempt to speak English here, which yes. is very helpful. And they do drive on the right-hand like side of the States. road. Yes, yes mm -hmm. just like in the States. I think that uh, what it'd be interesting to share is that we're going to the hotel and we stayed there due to the situation and the going on across the globe for about a week or so. Yes. And then we went to stay with friends yes. and we ended up staying there. About three weeks. I think it was month. five weeks actually, close to a month. It's Somewhere in that. Yeah, about a month. And we didn't know how long we were going to be there because we were going to find housing. housing so yes. w if you picked up on it, what we're saying is we traveled all the way across <laughs> the pond not knowing where we were going to stay. That's exactly right. And another set of friends of ours did that and everything was it fine. We found yes. a nice place, which is what you're seeing the videotape in, yes. as a matter of fact. <laughs> I must say... We thank the Most High because that occurred for us driving from the DMV to Los Angeles where we had a fabulous cross-country ride stopping in the French Quarter, Tuskegee Institute, Atlanta, Grand Canyon. Yes. We didn't know where we were going to be staying in Los Angeles even as far as where we were in Mississippi. We were signing <laughs> forms yes. online on my cell phone doing docu-signs. I think... I'm not saying everybody should be trusting or walking like that in faith, whatever. But what I'm saying is, it is true that 90% of the things we worry about do not happen. Right. No need to worry about them. Think about something else. Yeah, we had a safe trip, like we said, from the DMV to LA, and we had a, a safe trip from LA to where we are now, and uh, we were really blessed to to not have you know a lot of strange things happen. So really, like I say, things work out. So When we got settled here in this place and found this place, mm -hmm. and we're grateful for that after looking at a few, but you gotta know what you want. Um, and the price was right for yeah. us. Then it was time to take care of sundry items. Um, I needed to get, I brought a phone, a cell phone that I had paid off in the United States. Right. And what I didn't know and I learned when you pay off a phone, that quote unlocks it. So it's important to have at least one cell phone unlocked. Then I was able to purchase for 1,000 Rwandan francs, which is equal to $1, a SIM card to put in the cell phone that I had. So then I have a local phone and I also have a phone for uh, that I typically have for the United States, mm -hmm. so I can work back and forth with those two phones. It's just easier for me. Right. Um, a thing about the the home here and the way they do things. So most this is a cash society. They're not operating on credit and charge by cash. That means you're paying your rent usually in advance. Some people are able to find a month a month. Some people pay six months in advance. Some people pay three months in advance. Right. With regards to electricity, well, there's a meter on the outside of the house and there's a code you type in and you pay for your electricity in advance. And so when it runs out, then you got to put more money on it. <laughs> and we have had that happen where I forgot to keep it up to date. So um, those kinds of things that go on. There's one other little thing, and I don't know if it's little, with regards to the, the house. When taking a shower here, I guess this is the shift. Oh, yes. When you take a shower, you need to hit a switch, and that will turn on the heater, and the heater will heat up this water tank. Yes, inside and, of the bathroom, usually the right 
inside in the bathroom. Yeah. That way you have hot water. It only needs to be on about, I don't know, 15 minutes, give or take, whatever. Mm -hmm. It depends on how large that tank is. Mm -hmm. And never any problem with running out of water at all. But it's just something to remember. I kind of like it. There's been no problem there for me. Uh, no. Is it okay no, for you? No, it's fine. It's just different, you know. Every, you know, that's about when you're coming to different countries. You got to remember that in the states, things are like that in the states, and everywhere you go, you have to get used to the setup there, the culture, just how they they do things. So, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the culture, mm -hmm. so there is in my opinion, not a lot of fast food here. No, no. There's a KFC here. <laughs> There's a Hamburger Planet here, which is a spinoff of like Johnny Rocket or something like mm -hmm. that. But uh, that's good news because it means we're eating a little healthier. Right. There's no GMOs in the food, right. as a uh, shout out to Zach, as he was informing us. Mm -hmm. uh, there are friends here you don't have the chemicals in the food. Right. The other side of the coin is because it doesn't have, the food doesn't have all the preservatives and so forth in it, it may not last quite as long, right. but I would rather have a self safe, healthy body mm -hmm. than to have preservatives floating around inside of me. I just wouldn't like that. Right. So I'll tell you one thing I noticed, clean air. Yes, not, no pollution. Yeah. No, it's not like, you know, you have, back in the States, you have all these plants and all these different things. It's, it's not like that here. So, yeah. Very clean. You can breathe. Kigali is the land of a thousand hills. Yeah, a lot. Uh, <laughs> We've been on quite a few of those hills. <laughs> yes. And because those hills exist, every house has a great view. Mm -hmm. So look at it that way. And also you're going to get exercise. Yes. And you do see me looking down periodically. That's because I'm not trying to fool anybody. I will be reading notes because I don't remember things exactly like I used to anymore. <laughs> so just something to think about. Um, let's see here. Other than that, I think that we have enjoyed our, our, our trip across the pond. I feel a sense of freedom. Yes. Exhilaration. Yes. And you're at... I feel at, at peace here. It's like there's there's no stress. Um, there's not a it's because you're in a different area than the states. Maybe some of the things that you were concerned about in the states, it's not like that here. So um, you don't have to be concerned about you know a lot of um, uh, noise of ambulances going by or police cars or you know a lot of shootings and things like that. That's the difference. And so it's, it's really peaceful here. Maybe peaceful. we're used to that because of the DMV mm. in Los Angeles. I don't know, because there were um, ghetto birds all day long in LA <laughs> and, and we fireworks or guns popping off or both or something. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a, well, it's a cultural thing. And but, car uh, chases. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of car chases. But here it's, um, it's different. It's slower pace. Um, the people are very, very nice, and um, we're just still just getting used to the culture, you know, and trying to branch out more and eating more of the, the foods of the area, because people ask us, what are the foods you eat? And we haven't done a whole lot of the food from here, but we're, we're pressing more and more into it. But uh, they do eat a lot of avocado, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> which you meals, love, I right? I love avocado, yes. but it's, it's interesting. A lot of the meals, they have slight, they have avocado, um, but... Uh, you know. <laughs> it's cool. A uh, friend of ours from the States, they have avocado trees, mango trees. In other words, the stuff is growing right yes. here. And they're <laughs> big ones also, big <laughs> ones. So we're having, I call it avamole because I can't understand how do you get guacamole out of avocado, but that's another story. Anyway, they have avamole all the time mm -hmm. the it's just amazing to see these fruits growing on the yeah. trees and they're right there for your pickings mm -hmm. the other thing is well I, I guess i put it like this safe safety yes. well, i've been in we have drivers and they've been pulled over by the police and it's no big deal yeah it's a light matter in mm -hmm. fact one driver looked at me and said 
it ain't like this in, in the United States, <laughs> is it? And I was like, ouch. No. <laughs> um, second thing, the, as Marlene said, the people are so nice. They, when we say nice, I mean like honest. Yeah. If I've been paying for something, mm -hmm. you use your cell phone to pay for a yeah. lot of things through something they call uh, Mo uh, Mo mobile Mo money, Momo. Mm -hmm. And so uh, everyone seems to have that and it's easy to pay for a ride or some fruit, vegetables, your groceries, groceries whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, tickets for something, use your Momo. Yeah. And you keep adding money to that. But anyway... Mm -hmm. I've had people say to me, oh, no, no, it's not that amount. It's this amount. And, and they're literally giving money back to make sure I'm doing it correctly. Yeah. And I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. So you have the safety, you have the nice people, and the cleanness. Now, yeah. there's a YouTuber, and I'm going to say his name. It's Wodo Maya. Hope I, hopefully I said it correctly. He is, I think, out of Ghana. But mm -hmm. he's just turn, tearing up Africa in terms of a YouTuber who's moving across the 50 plus countries and showing what they're like. Mm -hmm. Be worth checking out that link. Anyway, Woda Maya literally had heard that the streets were so clean in Kigali that you could eat off of them. So he bought some food, sat down with his paper plate and was in the gutter eating his food because they're that clean. Yes, they're that clean. It sort of reminded me of um, Tokyo, which mm. is extremely clean. Okay. They don't have garbage cans on the streets. You take your garbage home with you. But it reminded me of that. So those are a couple of things that came to my mind. It really is what they say it is. They Oh, they've got the basketball thing going on here, the BAL or ball, which <laughs> is uh, Basketball Africa League. That's exciting. They have a lot of world conferences that go on here. Mm -hmm. It's just really amazing. Uh, we're enjoying it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we've covered everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if not, we'll do another video right. in the future and touch on something. Maybe there's something that you wanted to ask about in the comments. Go ahead and ask. We ask you that you would like, share, and subscribe. Let us know what you'd like to hear about. On the docket, youth in their 20s. Right. We're going to sit down with them. I've been in conversation with a couple of our new nieces and nephews mm -hmm. and they're going to talk about what is there to do around here what right. do some friends of mine shout out to uh carla d who asked what is it that folks do here how do you have fun if you're in your 20s what kind of activities are there stuff like that mm -hmm. also how about how we diaspora ought to act i've encountered a oh, small yeah. business woman uh, in fact several who say, I'd like to talk to your people about that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you come to another country, as Marlene was saying, and they have their culture. Right. You don't expect them to change their culture for you. And so she liked, she liked your ear to yes. share some of her observations. And this will help us to, as my mother would say, straighten up and fly right mm -hmm. and, and act right when we're here. Yeah, and I think that, I'm glad you said that because I think a lot of times people that, that travel or just coming to other places, they forget that it's not the United States and they don't really realize that what you do in the United, in the United States or the way you carry yourself, the way you interact with people, it's not necessarily the same in, a, in another country. Um, like he was saying in, in Japan or in other places, they're maybe quieter, you know, um, oh, yeah. it's, it's just different. So those are things you need to kind of pay attention to or do your research, you know, find out what is it like, you know, interacting with people in different countries? Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We really appreciate you. And you. Uh, that's it for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.